Good day to all our students in Practical Research 2. So today we are going to discuss the second week of Practical Research 2 for Quarter 1, which is about illustrating the importance of quantitative research across fields. So very basic lang video na ito, it's because we are just going to determine the importance of quantitative research, which is your PR2 across different fields. So according to Jerusalem et al. last 2017, um, the following fields use quantitative research. First is yung natural sciences like life science, physics, space science, chemistry, earth science. Second is mathematical sciences. Third is social sciences like psychology, economics, demography, sociology, marketing, community health, and development, gender, and political sciences. So lahat na nakikita nyo rito, ito raw ang gumagamit ng quantitative research para mas ma-improve kung ano ang existing knowledge na meron sa kanila. Okay, so according to Jerusalem pa rin, here are the reasons for using quantitative research. Number one, it is more reliable and objective. Paano natin masasabi na mas reliable at mas objective si quantitative research as compared with qualitative research? First and foremost, Pag sinabi natin quantitative research, it uses a large number of sample size. Ibig sabihin, mas marami yung isa survey or interview natin para makakolect tayo ng data. Kadalasan din sa quantitative research, ang data natin ay numerical. Di ba? Meron tayong kasabihan sa math that numbers don't lie. So that means, mas objective at mas kapanipaniwala kung meron tayong numbers na ipapakita sa ating research. Kaya siya more reliable and objective. Okay, second one, it can use statistics to generalize a finding. So unlike qualitative research na hindi siya nag-utilize masyado ng statistics, di ba? Mga puro graphs lang yung ginawa natin last semester about um, presenting our data. Now, we are going to use statistics to generalize our findings. It means to say na yung na-collect natin na data na mas reliable at mas objective, mas patutunayan pa natin na tama yung ating mga findings gamit ng statistics. As you all know, statistics is an indispensable partner of research because statistics proves all our claims or our findings. Okay? So, later on, magkakaroon tayo ng mga discussions about statistical tools na pwede niyong magamit. Number three, it often reduces and restructures a complex problem to a limited number of variables. So, itong part naman na to, nagsasabi ito na yung mga pinaka-complex na na problems, pwede natin silang i-analyze at i-chop-chop into smaller pieces of variables para mas maintindihan natin. Yun ang purpose ni quantitative research. More on yung mga bigger variables, ginagawa natin silang, kinoconvert natin sila into pieces of um, smaller variables para mas maintindihan natin kung ano yung nangyayari talaga in certain phenomena. Okay? Number four, it looks at relationships between variables and can establish cause and effect highly in highly controlled circumstances. So, ang quantitative research, mapapansin natin, no, meron siyang apat na uri. Dalawang uri doon ay uh, yung intervention-based na nasabi natin last video lesson. Kung hindi nyo pa napanood yun, please do watch that. No? So, yun yung first video lesson that we have discussed. Now, um, si number four na reason na nakalagay po dito, uh, it emphasizes the word highly controlled circumstances. So, in most cases, quantitative research is highly controlled in the sense that we sometimes employ experimental method o kaya yung tinatawag natin na sa experimental method. So, in that sense, nagkakaroon tayo ng controlling of variables. May mga parts tayong minamanipula. And that is one of the main reasons why we use quantitative research. Panglima, it tests theories or hypotheses. This one is related with the second reason here, which is the use of statistics. So, itong panglima is still under the use of statistics, particularly on hypothesis testing. So, dito sa part na to, kapag test natin ang isang theory, dadaan at dadaan tayo sa hypothesis testing na tinatawag. Okay? Later on, 
uh, mabibigyan pa natin yan ng mas malalim na pagpapakahulugan. So for now, ito muna. Number six, it assumes sample is representative of the population. This is always true with quantitative research. Ang pagkukuha ka ng sample, automatic na yung assumption mo ay representative na of the entire population. Ano ba yung sinasabi ko rito? Kung maaalala ninyo ang difference ng population sa sample, pag sinabi natin sample, yun yung portion lang ng population. Halimbawa, kung ikaw ay gustong magkaroon ng research which talks about all the grade 11 students of Highway Hills Integrated School. So kung ganun ang scenario, then your population is the entire grade 11 students. Pero hindi mo naman sila lahat i-interview or isi-survey, right? Kukuha ka lang ng for portion, maybe 40 or 50, it's up to you, di ba? So, ang tawag mo doon sa portion na kukunin mo sa buong grade 11 students, ang tawag mo doon ay sample. At pag ginawa mo yon, using quantitative research, we are already assuming that that is representative of the population. Ibig sabihin, kung ano yung naging resulta ng sample natin, pwede natin i-generalize na ganun din yung nangyayari sa population. Number seven, subjectivity of researcher in pathology is recognized less. So dito, kadalasan, ang quantitative research, hindi na siya gaanong subjective. Kaya sabi dito, recognized less. Kasi nga, marami na tayo mga numbers na ginagamit. Ang minamanipulate na natin ay quantitative data. Therefore, yung subjectivity ay hindi na masyadong nakikita. Okay? And finally, it is less detailed than qualitative data. Kasi naman, qualitative data, kung inyong makakalala, napakahaba. Mga paragraphs, diba? Puro ganun, textual form tayo, essay type, ang mga sagot sa survey, diba? So ngayon, puro na lang siya mga numbers or mga interpreted at converted into numbers ng mga data. So mas madali na siya ngayon. Hindi na siya gaano ka detalyado compared sa qualitative research na nagawa nyo last set. Okay. So according to Bermudo et al. naman, Last 2014, quantitative research is conducted for the following process. So, ano-ano nga ba yung dahilan? Bakit ginagawa or ginagamit si quantitative research? Number one, to discover new facts about unknown phenomena. So, every form of research, kahit qualitative pa yan, uh, we use it to discover new facts about an unknown phenomena. Diba? Kung may gusto tayong discover, may gusto tayong tuklasin. Diba? We are using research. Pangalawa, to find answers to problems which are partially solved by existing methods and information. So, sa mga malilikot ang pag-iisip, bakadalasan, we use research to ascertain some findings o kaya naman ay meron tayong gustong subukin na ibang method para masolve ng isang problem. Diba? So, hindi naman laging pag sinabi nating problem, that's already mathematics. Pwede namang ibang uri ng problema yun. That's why, diba, sabi ko sa inyo last week, you need to formulate or to think of three problems kasi lahat tayo may problem. Depende na lang siya sa association natin. No? So, pangatlo to satisfy researchers' curiosity. So, in some cases, researchers conduct research because they just want to solve their questions or to answer their questions. Kung curious ka, why not try doing research para masagot yung curiosity mo na yun? Ang tanong mo na yun. Pang-apat, to verify or expand existing knowledge. Ito yung sinasabi ko kanina na to ascertain some findings. Yung ibang research kinakandak ng maraming beses para mapatunayan na talagang totoo yung resulta ng mga naunang research. Ganon naman talaga. No? So, pag nagtitest yung mga sa, sa, atin sa medical field, pag nagtitest sila ng bakuna, hindi lang naman isang beses yon. Uulit-ulitin nila yon para mas patunayan na totoo yung effectivity ng isang bakuna. Okay? Number five, to acquire a deeper and better understanding about a phenomenon. So, kagaya rin ng pagsasagot at pagdidiscover ng bagong facts. Kung gusto na nating mapalalim pa or mas mapalawig pa ang ating kaalaman, then we use research, particularly quantitative research. So, ito naman yung mga halimbawa kung paano nagagamit ang research or quantitative research sa mga fields. So, unahin natin sa social work. Sa social work, it is used to operationalize variables, to measure change, allowing social scientists to make important comparisons and quantify relationships. So, pag sa social work, siguro ang ikukumpara natin dito na trabaho or field na nakikita nyo lagi ay yung mga, um, simple, yung mga nagsisensus. 
ba? So, under sila ng social work, tinatawag. So, bakit nila kailangan i-operationalize ang mga variables para makita yung change? Di ba? Um, meron tayong mga nagsisensus for population, meron din nagsisensus for vaccine. So, maraming gamit yun. No? So, they use numbers. And if they wanted to have a research on something, they are going to use quantitative research kasi may mga cases na kailangan nila i-compare ang data sa previous years, may mga cases na hanapin nila yung relationships ng mga variables. So, they will be using quantitative research for that matter. That's according to Scarnato 2017. Pangalawa, sa environmental science, it reduces the numerous uncertainties by providing reliable representation of reality enabling to proceed toward potential solutions with greater confidence. I think this one is true for all scientists, sciences, not just in environmental science. Ang quantitative research kasi, di ba, sabi natin kanina, it uh, gives us more reliable information as compared to qualitative research. That's because it uses numbers. With such um, fact, that means that environmental science can leverage this um, benefit by using numbers so that yung solutions na pwede nilang ma-provide sa mga problems regarding environmental science ay magkakaroon sila ng mas greater yung magiging confidence nila. Kasi nga, di ba, mas reliable yung data na na-produce. Pangatlo, sa business field naman. Sa business field, it is used to populate statistics from high volume sample size to gain statistically valid results in customer insight. Diba, um, kadalasan sa business field, nag-survey sila sa mga customers. Um, ang quantitative research ay magpo-provide ng mas reliable na resulta ng mga survey kapag mas marami yung survey. So, yun yung leverage na ginagawa naman sa business field, kaya laging ginagamit si quantitative research. Now, this is according to Demetrius and McLean, class 2012. So, here are the references if you wanted to check them out. Ito po yung mga references natin. Uh, pwede nyo silang ma-search through online or maybe if you have some books in your houses or it's a national bookstore, pwede kayong tumingin dyan. So that's all for our discussion about uh, this topic. I hope that if you have questions, do not hesitate to send it in our GC so that I can answer them right away. If you have further questions, you may send a private message or an email to me in my provided email last orientation date. Again, this is Sir Ray, hoping you are all safe and healthy. God bless and keep safe.